Now today what we'll be discussing is about the Web Titan UL filtering solution, which helps to content filter web traffic in your enterprise. Right. So these this is what we'll be covering for today. Uh, let me pass on the controls to Roko who will be driving the session going forward. Roko, I'll pass the controls to you. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, again, um, uh, my name is Rocco Danino. I'm the EVP of Strategic Alliances. And uh, really what we wanted to talk about is, um, you know, what's happening in, uh, in cybersecurity today. And almost daily, um, we're hearing of another corporate breach due to ransomware, malware, and phishing attacks. Actually, 43% of cyber attacks target small businesses and mid-sized businesses as there's just more of them, right? Um, and, in, and in a recent survey, 55% of respondents say their companies have been uh, experienced by a cyber attack in the last 12 months. And the number one type of attack in these businesses were web-borne virus attacks. Uh, you know, companies who think they are too small to be attacked are prime targets for today's hackers. And, and we know that more than 60% of F &B, uh, SMBs suffering breaches go out of business in, in 12 months. Um, you know, the, 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 the data doesn't lie. Um, you know, 97% uh, percent, uh, attacks are, are more frequent this year alone. And there's a huge growth in frontline web security in today's market. And, you know, we're seeing 90% of the ID department uh, departments today uh, restrict web access, which is great to protect against malware, ransomware infections that threaten the network. Um, and, you know, for, for, for us, we have really uh, been such a, uh, uh, a, a champion DNS filtering as a key security layer for the last five years. Uh, we believe prevention is better uh, than the cure. And, you know, we pride ourselves in being the leader in web security for uh, the mid-sized businesses and small businesses. So, why do we believe in DNS filtering is the future of uh, network security? It, you know, we think it's the front and key layer uh, as a network security. Uh, there's, again, there's no hardware. This is a cloud-based security where we can set up a private cloud for partners and it gets uh, threat intelligence in real time. Um, research is showing that um, web filtering solutions, uh, you know, representing pro uh, customers networks as well as helping, you know, worker productivity. And when it comes to managed service providers, the best choice they're seeing is DNS layered filtering solutions as part of their security stack. Uh, DNS filtering is a vital layer and, 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 and by its nature stops threats before you ever even access them. Um, DNS stops threats communicating back to the internet uh, and, and again its prevention is better than the cure. Um, it's both, you know, DNS is going to both identify and stop users and network from being owned by ransomware botnets and malware, virtually all types of malware. It's estimated that 91% of malware need DNS services to find web addresses to infect. And once affected, their goal is to communicate, communicate or phone home back to a command and control server for nefarious, nefarious uh, instructions. And again, as, as we all know in this industry, uh, and if I can emphasize this point, these phone home instructions typically never happen during normal work hours. There are weekends, there are 5.30, uh, in the evening on a Friday, uh, it's a nightmare for the administration. And, and the fact is that DNS filtering has become the future of internet and network security. Uh, and it's a, and again, it's a ransomware killer. In terms of our threat intelligence behind the service, uh, we are crawling 700 million URLs and 6 billion web pages in 20 languages in real time every day. And by capturing and categorizing active web traffic from over 700 million end users and 10 billions of impressions and web connected devices, we can provide the most accurate and best in kind threat intelligence for our customers. 
we, we utilize both uh, artificial intelligence and human supervised machine learning. This process is covering almost 100% of the active web. And we have a 99% accuracy for categorizing web content in topic-based, objectional, and, and of course, obviously malicious categories at the domain, subdomain, and full path level. Again, our threat intelligence is based on 5 trillion search queries monthly. Um, our real-time database contains over 3 million malicious URLs, phishing sites, and IP addresses at, at one time. And every single day, we are identifying 100,000 new malicious threats. Every second, we're blocking four new malicious URLs and phishing sites. When it, when, what, you know, what it boils down to is that the speed and delivery, the accuracy, and the detection of dangerous sites is second to none in the industry, and we're very proud of that. So let's talk a little bit about Celestic's web filter. And you know, simply here's a diagram. You know exactly how you know how does it work? When the user tries to access a access a website, this request is sent to Web Titan Cloud. Web Titan Cloud checks the user's policy, which has been predefined by the administrator. The Web Titan Cloud decides whether the user is allowed to access the site. If allowed, the user will proceed to the site. If the user is not allowed, the user will re receive a, a, a blocked message. It's that simple. The process takes a matter of milliseconds at the at milliseconds as the cloud is based on you know, uh, based uh, a nature of product eliminates the latency and and again it's the speed of delivery you do not see a latency with this service it's one of the key features of the service and when we look at the key features again this is a hundred percent cloud-based no software installation setup is you know literally three easy steps uh, you can control multiple locations and routers, uh, you know, in, in the Wi-Fi space, in, in, in networks, in the enterprise, in the SME. Uh, it is a scalable solution. So although, uh, you know, we have a focus on the, the mid-market, this absolutely scales into the enterprise. Uh, partners and customers can look at all, all different types of recordings of where malware is coming, coming in and entering into an environment. And again, because this is cloud-based, the speed of delivery is key for this type of service. When we look at the market, you know, certainly one of the largest players in the marketplace uh, was OpenDNS, which was acquired by Cisco and is now part of Cisco Umbrella. And we are, when, when customers are looking at alternatives in the market, they're reaching out to us. Uh, as it, it's very simple. You know, the first two points here is that it's very easy to install. Secondly, we are, uh, our price points are a fraction of what Cisco Umbrella are today in the marketplace. Um, again, this is our own private cloud and the easy use and, and the price are, of course, are two notable things. But when it comes to how we work with partners and customers, uh, you know, we are very data compliant as when we set up private clouds, it has to do with data privacy in a country or a location. We have an extensive set of APIs where we can integrate into a, a front end platform or the, the plat or the, the solution can be used uh, in whole or in part. Um, safe search, uh, which, which Derek will get into is a, a uh, great feature that we have, you know, a, a clear advantage as, as safe search allows you to force users to use uh, safe search functions within several major search engines, Google, Yahoo, Bing. And this is an essential feature. It's preventing inappropriate and dangerous search results peering, most importantly, in Google images. We force that enablement. This feature is vital in public facing environments, guest Wi-Fi's, all education deployments, as it's connected to SIPA compliance. And again, it's just another differentiator that uh, we'll speak to as, as Derek walks you through the products. So at, at, at this time, um, I wanted to pass the controls over to Derek uh, and, and, and provide you an in-depth look at our solution. And uh, Derek, you want to take it from here? Yes. Thank you, Rocco. Um, I'll just take the screen now.
Great. Uh, so my screen should be in view now. Um, yes. So again, thank you all for uh, joining today. Um, I'll, I'll go over some of what Rocco has already mentioned, um, but I'll go into a little bit more depth from the technical aspects. Uh, as Rocco mentioned earlier on, um, for compliance purposes, a number of different reasons, we do not do an ANICAS system like some of our competitors, namely uh, Cisco Umbrella. What we do is we deploy servers for you in your region. Um, we've got a global footprint. We, we host an AWS, so we would always build redundancy into any deployment we do for you. So when we speak to you, we will find out where you're located, where you would like these systems located for you and your customers. We will deploy them in AWS in a region of your choosing. We will supply you with two IPs for DNS forwarding. Those IPs are yours and yours only. Nobody else would be using them. So to come into the product itself, as we mentioned earlier, there's three simple steps. I'll briefly run over them. First step would be we need an identifier for your location and for your customers. Generally, an IP address is used there, so the public-facing IP of the location or addresses of their multiple locations. That would be step one. Step two is to set your policy, and I'll go into the policy engine where the advanced threat intelligence is built in. And step three is to forward the DNS requests from that location onto us. So within the UI, this is what it would look like. It's, you can fully white label this UI also. So you'll get a line chart of throughout the day of how many allowed and blocked requests, and you can toggle back to last seven days, last year, or the entirety uh, history of the traffic coming through the system. This will give you the top um, allowed and blocked categories and domains, and your most recent requests that were blocked as well. And as you can see, it'll show you your external IP. So if you have multiple locations, it'll also show you each of those locations and location name. So within here, this would be step one in settings and locations. As I mentioned earlier, we need an identifier and generally an IP address is used in there, but that's not a necessity. Um, we do also support virtual IPs, which uses extended DNS or DNS mask. So you can have a tag in the DNS request. We can identify that tag as well. So we support a number of flavors. We have st static IPs and you can add ranges in a cedar fashion. So as you can see, I've got two IPs in here. We also support dynamic IPs and dynamic DNS host names. So if you have a host name here, you can click on add and enter in this host name. Generally this uh, FQDN or host name is supplied by the likes of NoIP or DynDNS. Where we find this useful is um, with a number of public transport authorities and they would be filtering the their buses and trains every time the bus or the train turns off the routers turn off turn it back on the routers come back online with a new ip so we have got um, a identifier for each of those which is this host name and we resolve that so we have the ip at all times we also have virtual locations as mentioned earlier this supports edns or dns mask if your router attaches that uh, metadata into the DNS request, we can identify that tag. and We can assign policies appropriately also. The roaming tab is interesting. This is for um, enterprise customers um, and, uh, that may have roaming users or road warriors, people out on the road with laptops or Macs. We've got an agent that can be installed on those devices to always bring the DNS request back to us, no matter where in the world they connect to the internet, and we can assign the correct policy to that laptop, to that user. So that would be step one complete. Step two then is to come to your policies and set your policy. As you can see in here, we've got 53 predefined categories. So we have the web categorized into these 53 categories. They range from alcohol, cars and transport, to pornography, malware and spyware, and a number of others. As it was mentioned here, we have got 550 users worldwide feeding into the master database, the categorization database. This is the world leading categorization database. Uh, Real-time URL threat detection from the, we've, we troll the internet. We've also got algorithms running behind the scenes here. So we've got the most up-to-date categorization database you can get. 
there's roughly 100,000 malware sites identified and categorized correctly a day. So if it is a control and command type of virus that gets in, say it came in via an email, most viruses are coming in via email, but the virus isn't in the email. It's a link within the email. Your end user clicks on that link, that goes calls home, and it installs the, the malware, the cryptoware, whatever it is that it's pulling down. That's where we WebTitan Cloud or Celestix Cloud comes into place. We stop that. If your user clicks on that link, we'll stop it immediately. So it never gets out. The, customer, the end user is none the wiser and there's no malware infected uh, devices. It's a simple traffic light system here. So it's red for block, green for allow. So as you can see, there's malware and uh, spyware and malicious sites, the spam, uh, phishing and fraud. There's a number of different categories in there that we would say always have these blocked for your, your, uh, for your security aspect of it. And then this can be tailored at a per customer basis. So each customer can have their own policy as well. Safe search, as we've mentioned earlier as well, is a key component in here. And at the two click, you simply toggle this to on, click on save, that is safe search enabled on all requests coming through us, regardless of the browser settings. So even if the browser has um, safe search off, we will enforce it no matter what their settings are there. A quick snapshot of what safe search is. If you search for say a pornography related word or a, a hacker type word or a malware type word, you will not get any pornography or malware type results back in the URLs that are returned or in the imagery that is returned. It can also enforce YouTube restrictive mode. You can also have notifications. So you can enter in your email address in here or multiple email addresses. And if you want to know any time a spy or a malware site is, is uh, try to be accessed, you can tick that here, put in your email address, click on save, Every time someone tries to access a malware or a spyware site, it will trigger an email with the timestamp, the name, the URL they were going to, um, and a number of other data, bits of data in there. And we also have a whitelist and a blacklist. And the example I use here is LinkedIn. So in uh, enterprise, if you've got social networking blocked, the social networking category blocked, you may want to allow LinkedIn for business purposes. So you would whitelist that. People can get to LinkedIn, but they cannot get to Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Twitter, all the others that are out there. So that is step two complete. The last step then is at your router, at your domain controller, at your end device, any level, set the DNS forwarders to the IPs that we've supplied to you, and you're being filtered immediately. And again, for compliance purposes and say, I'm based here in Europe, so we brought in GDPR there recently. This is fully comp compliant with all of the above. So some of the aspects around this, now that you're up and running, some of the aspects around this. You can have a tailored, I'll just move there. You can have a tailored block page per customer as well. So you can change the wording of it directly from here. Or you can click on advanced and you can change the CSS. So you can change the coding of the block page to show your logo, your color schemes, everything and anything you would like to see in it, that can go in there. And we can help you out there as well. So if I preview it, this is an example of what the block page would look like. Um, but we can get as fancy as you wish in there. We can have links and logos, color schemes, anything you would like. Cloud keys, um, this is useful and uh, we see it used in a range of different areas. Uh, one example I would generally use is uh, a library. So we filter library and data of people coming in, researching different things all the time. So if someone was coming in researching uh, a topic that may be blocked by their policy that they have, they create a cloud key. It's like a bypass token. So you click on add, it randomly generates the key, but you can change that to be whatever you want, one, two, three, four. We wouldn't recommend having it that, but you can have it to that. You can say expires after two hours, it can only be used once, or you can have a valid from and until date and click on save. When you have a cloud key in place, on the block page, you will see a message saying enter cloud key to continue. And that user can then enter their cloud key and they will gain access to that site. Again, with that, this enter cloud key to continue will only appear on the block page 
when there's a cloud key in place. And then for categorization. So if you were wondering what a site would be categorized, or maybe your own domain, your own site, what is that categorized under? You can come in here, you can test the categorization. If you feel that that is not correct, you can come to the recategorize domain aspect. You can enter in the domain and you can select up to three categories you feel that that should fall under. Click on submit and that will be recategorized, we say within 24 hours, but I've never seen it go over two hours. So it will have a recategorize extremely quickly for you. It's also because it's also categorized very quickly because it's rare that we have a recategorization in. Not to say it never happens, but it's extremely, extremely rare. So to just give a recap of all of that, we host on AWS. We've got a global footprint. We dedicate servers to you. They're yours and yours only. Fully compliant with GDPR and a number of other guidelines out there. Roughly 550 end users worldwide feeding into our categorization database with real-time URL threat intelligence built into that. Um, as I mentioned, over 100 million malware sites, URLs identified per day and fed into this. Malware sites are changing, say, every 10 to 15 minutes. They're busy. We're just as busy keeping them off your networks. The beauty of DNS filtering is there's no latency, no latency at all. Because we've deployed it to a region that's closest to you or the most um, uh, side by side with you and your customers, there's zero latency. It's not like an on-site proxy or a cloud proxy where all the traffic and it's like one tunnel, everything going through, this is your DNS and it's microseconds to resolve, block and allow. Three steps to get up and running. We need an identifier, you set your policy and you forward your DNS requests. One thing I did not mention is everything that I've shown you here from the UI, you can do via an API. We've got an extremely extensive API set where if you've got your own cloud management portal, you can build us into that using API. You can look and feel any ways you want on your UI. And there's also a robust reporting suite. On the reporting history tab, this will show you a live view of all the traffic coming through. On the reporting reports, you can run more granular reports. So we've got the largest number of reports you can get for, from a DNS filter as well. You can run requests uh, for a custom date range for today, yesterday, last week, and number of date ranges. And it will default to the top 10, but you can toggle that to the top 20, say. So that's the top 20 categories for today. If there's a report that you like the looks of, or you feel that you or your customers would like to receive at a regular basis to, to show the return on investment, you can simply schedule this report. So you say, yes, this shows me I've blocked X amount of sites in the last month, and it fell into this category. You can click on schedule report, put in the email addresses you would like this to be sent to, enter in some email headers, the from address, the subject line, the description, whether you like it in PDF or CSV, personally, I like the PDF. You can say the date range of the report. So you could say uh, for last month and send it on the first of each month. So I'll get a monthly report on the, the traffic for the previous month. Schedule that and you'll receive that every time. You'll never have to log into the UI again. So that is the presentation complete. Uh, we do have time for a and a I believe, at the end of it, but I will pass it back to Rocco at this point. Great, thank you, Derek. Uh, again, so um, from a, from a follow up, uh, we have time for a Q and A, but you know, for this service and 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 what we're uh, really trying to accomplish on uh, this webinar is that uh, web security for us uh, has been a huge growth opportunity for uh, managed service providers in the space, and when it comes to the advantages of open DNS, um, we feel we're second to none 
you know, from a pricing perspective, from an ease of use, from our APIs, from, from some, some of the key advantages uh, that, that Derek has showed you. And so uh, we'd like to open it up uh, now to any questions uh, in the field. Um, so uh, Dinesh, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Rocco. Yes, uh, we have some questions uh, coming up from people over here. So the first question what we have is whitelisting and blacklisting. Is it only domain specific? What if we need to blacklist a whole domain except one URL for this domain or vice versa? Yes. So because it's a DNS based filter, DNS works at the domain level. So it can depend on the domain itself. So if I come back, um, so within the whitelist and the blacklist, what I may do is if I share my screen again and sure, go ahead. through. Perfect. So if we come into the whitelist and blacklist, it would be at the domain level, but you can include or exclude subdomains. So because it's a DNS-based filter, we work off the domain level. So it is extremely rare that you would be looking to blacklist an entire URL and whitelist a specific um, URL within that. What is more likely done is you would block the category that that would fall into and whitelist the um, URL that you want people to get to. So it would be more common to have a, a block on the category and an allow on the domain. We do have some cases where the category is allowed, but there's a particular domain that falls in there that will be blocked. And I hope that I hope that answers the question. Okay, we have another question. Is it possible to detect botnet ransomware CNC? Yes, it is. And that is built into our threat intelligence. And that would come into the categories, the spyware and malware uh, particularly, also spam and phishing and fraud and compromised sites. But mainly within the spyware and malicious sites, we trawl through the internet and we do get those. We hit those within this category. Once you've got this category blocked, you will not have any botnet, any ransomware, any uh, CNC. Especially as the example I used earlier on, the emails coming in, you click on that, that goes to the command, <coughs> that goes down the virus. We block that at the DNS level. As soon as that's clicked on, we block it. It will not get into your network. So Derek, there is another, to follow up on the previous answer, um, they have given an example. For example, google.com slash drive, right? So it's a common domain name, but you have a subcategory which is drive, right? Which Google identifies that. So is it possible to block similar URLs? It is. Um, we would generally have to look at the URLs themselves, especially with Google. They would have a number of different, um, as you have there, the slash drive. They'd have a number yeah. of different types like that. A lot of the time, what we've noticed lately is it should be, say, google.drive.com or google.apps.com and so on. So we could block that particular domain. Whereas you're allowing the category for Google, you're only blocking that one particular domain. The rest is being allowed. So google.drive.com, say, or google.apps.com, that should be blocked. The rest would be allowed. It does depend on the domain and how they have configured their domains, though. So it would take a little bit of looking into. And um, we'd be, it's not always the case because DNS is domain-based. We cannot guarantee we would have a domain like that but that is the nature of DNS-based filtering, and that should be uh, the same for everybody in the DNS uh, filtering world. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that's about the questions we have for the moment. Okay, great. Do you wanna close it up, uh, Dinesh? Uh, yes. So. There are, so there are two, three questions in the chat. They were not um, um, raised under the QA, so I'm just trying to copy them and send it to Derek, if that's okay, if you want to answer them. Great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, so I'll just uh, uh, send you in the chat the first question. You should be able to see, and then I'll, I'll, I'll send them the more afterwards. Okay, let me see here. Do 
to uh, stop my screen share to see the chat for some reason. So I'll just see it here. Uh, okay, so we have a question. Okay, so the first one I see here is, can I use moderate safe search mode on YouTube instead of restrictive mode? Uh, the answer to that is yes. By default, it goes to restrictive, but we can uh, change that uh, to moderate for you. We can also disable it for YouTube, for Google, for any particular one you wished as well. By default, it will enable restrictive YouTube and safe search for the rest. The next question I see is, is your solution support DNS over TLS? Um, yes, um, we have recently brought that in. We will be expanding on that momentarily, and we will have some white pairs on that that we will be able to um, disperse shortly as well. Next is, what if Botnet is using IP addresses instead of DNS to access CMC? Very good question, and one that comes up quite a bit. Because DNS-based filtering is flipping the name into an IP, when someone accesses uh, an IP directly, generally it will bypass DNS uh, filters. For cases like this, if you really want to get locked down, we do have an agent that can push out to stop IP access. But also what we have found is, especially in CNC circumstances, are, it's extremely rare that they would uh, have the link, say, in the email and so on as an IP address. They may have a name there because an end user would be less likely to click on an IP address as they would a naming convention or an FQDN. That's kind of from the research that we have seen. It's not to, not to, to dismiss the question, absolutely, people, if they go to IPs, a lot of the time it will bypass um, DNS filters. But again, a lot of the time if they go to an IP, it will um, end up going to a domain that needs to be rendered. Um, so if they just go to a specific IP address, there's no DNS request involved, yes, it will bypass the filter unless you have our agent installed to stop that. But a lot from our, our research and um, communications with partners and other vendors out there, um, it, it is rare, it is extremely rare. And then the next question I see is, is your solution blocking DNS tunneling if you use DNS responder support for IPv6? So uh, support for IPv6, yes, we do a full support for IPv6. And DNS tunneling. So a lot of the time, uh, it's very hard to stop that. We can stop people downloading tools to enable the likes of uh, VPNs and tunneling and Tor and so on. But if they've already got those on their end devices, it is extremely, extremely hard to block. And I think that should be the same for all filters uh, globally. Um, so we can stop people getting that onto their systems. If they already have it on their systems, it is extremely, extremely hard to stop. Trying to see, did I miss any there? I think that's it so far. Um, I see one here from Faraz. Does OpenDNS have key features like Safe Search AD integration? So we do a full AD integration also here, and Safe Search, OpenDNS is Safe Search. They don't, they didn't have it fully into the product on the two click. Just click it on, and it's done. A lot of the time they'd be recommending for you to do the redirect on your firewall because it was an anycast system they would have to enable it for everybody uh, whereas not they couldn't target individual because we build a system for you that's extremely scalable for you uh, it's a two click whereas open dns had it slightly differently they're an anycast so if they enable it they would have to enable it for their entire customer base Okay, I don't see any other questions. Thanks a lot for joining this webinar. Um, we'll keep you posted on the email and the winner. Thanks once again, and happy holidays. Thanks a lot.